Do you need to create a pivot table in MySQL without using Microsoft Excel? You can do this only using SQL and I'll show you how. Here is the sample data we'll use in this video. We've got some details about orders for books here. Let's say we wanted to show a pivot table which is a list of the book publishers and the number of orders that have been placed for books by each publisher for each year. So the number of orders by year and by publisher. First, we need to show the publisher names. I'll also add in the order ID so we can tell that the data represents a list of orders. We can run this and see the results, which is a list of order IDs and publisher names. Now we want to show columns that represent the number of orders in each year. When we create a pivot table in Excel, the column headings are determined automatically from the data. However, there's not an easy way to do this in MySQL. But we can manually calculate the column headings. To do this, we need to specify the year values. How do we know which year values to use? We can find the data in the cust order table. I'll select the order date value, extract the year, and use the distinct keyword to get the unique values. I'll order by this column so I see them in order. We run this and see the results. We can see there are four rows, so four years that we have orders for, from 2019 to 2022. We'll start with the first year, 2019, and then add the others. In our original query, we had the order ID and the publisher name. We want to see the year of the order. Let's add a new column to show the year of this order. We'll use the year function, like we just did, to show this. We run this query and see our results here. In case you're wondering, you can find the scripts to set this data up and the SQL queries used in this video in my GitHub repository in the description. Now we need to add a new column to show the number of orders in the year 2019. To do this, we need to determine if each order is in the year 2019 or not. And to do this, we can use a case statement. We add a new column starting with case. Then we say when, then our year of the order date, and equals 2019. We specify then one else zero. This means that if this condition is true, if the year of the order date is in 2019, it will display 1. If it's not true and the order is in another year, it shows 0. We have end, then we give it a column alias of orders underscore 2019. Our query is ready, so let's run it. We can see the results here. We have a new column called orders underscore 2019, which shows a value of 1 for orders in 2019 and 0 for orders in other years. If you want a quick reference guide for many common SQL commands and features, and stop forgetting the syntax for SQL, you'll love the SQL cheat sheets I created. Get your copy at the link in the description. So we have rows for all of our orders, where we can see the publisher name and whether they are in 2019 or not. We don't want to show individual orders, we want to see the count of orders for each publisher, so some kind of grouping. We can update this query to group our results. We want to group by the publisher name so we can remove the order ID and the order year from our results. We just have the publisher name and this case statement. Let's run this and see the result. We can see our columns here. We have a 1 for orders in 2019 and a 0 for orders that are not. To find the total number of orders in 2019, we can use the sum function on this orders 2019 column. This sum function will add up all of the numbers and show the number of orders that are in 2019. We surround the case with sum. Because we're now using an aggregate function, we need to add a group by clause, so we do that and group by the publisher name. Let's run this query. We can see a list of unique publishers here, and the count of orders in 2019 for books by that publisher. So far so good, but we only have one year. What about the other years? Well, now that we have this first year calculated, we can do the same thing for the other years. This is easy as copying this line with the sum and case statement, pasting it, and updating the year in both the case statement and the column alias. We can repeat this for all of the years, so 2020, 2021, and 2022. Let's run the query. We can see our updated results here. We see the publisher name and four columns, one for each of the years of the order. Each publisher has a value that represents the number of orders for that publisher for that year. This is the pivot table of publishers and years that we wanted. What happens when the next year arrives and we get more orders? 
we'll need to update the query to add a new column. If we want to improve this, we could use a stored procedure to generate the columns for the pivot table or use dynamic SQL, but the approach we have taken is simple. You might be wondering, why did we use the sum function and not count? Well, it's because sum will add up the values of 1 and 0 correctly. If we change the sum to count, it will count both the 1 and 0 values as orders within that year, resulting in an incorrect result. We can see here that each publisher has the same number of orders in each year, which has happened because the count function didn't give us what we need. We could still use count, but we have to change the return value when the match is not found from 0 to null. This is because count will count non-null values, and a null means it won't be counted. We do this and we can see the results are correct, and the same as the earlier example with sum. To create a pivot table in MySQL, you use the case statement to return either 1 or 0, then sum the values and group by your other column. You can use more complicated logic if you need to by updating your case statement. If you like this feature of SQL, you'll want to watch this video next where you'll learn about a concept to improve the readability of your queries and make them easier to work with. Thanks for watching.